most of us hear the word analytics and immediately associate it with reporting or deep diving into some sort of data. But a lot of times I find that all we really want is just a heads up or a quick notification that something happened. And historically, the way that this would work is you might look at certain reporting tools once a day or get something sent on an email. But today I want to show you how you can extend this idea of reverse ETL to actually send notifications directly to wherever you're at. So whether that's Teams, Slack or whatever communication device you're working on. So what we'll do is we'll talk about first, what are some scenarios and why would you want to do this? We'll look at how you can actually set this up in census, which is a reverse ETL tool. And then finally, we'll see it all put together and have a notification triggered from our data warehouse and sent to us over in Slack. So first of all, why would we do this? And what are some common examples of when this might be practical? And in my mind, there are two, you know, kind of high level ways that this would work. First is maybe a scenario where you have a daily update of something that you want to see. So let's say maybe there's a daily snapshot table that you have every day. You have a summary of certain metrics aggregated up to the day. Normally, you might go to, let's say, a reporting tool and just kind of take a quick look. Maybe you have it sent over to you in an email and you go to your inbox and check it. But alternatively, now you could use a reverse ETL tool like Census to have it pushed to you directly, let's say, in Slack. So that way you don't have to go anywhere else. There's no code involved here and it's just plug and play and sent to you on a schedule. The other scenario is more of an event or it's kind of a trigger basis where whenever something specific happens, let's say uh, you get a new customer or there's a new order placed or, you know, whatever, depending on the scope and the size of your company, whenever that happens, have it sent to you as a notification in Slack so you can take immediate action on it. And you may be able to potentially set a trigger like that up in your application itself. The benefit here is that this is now from your data warehouse, meaning everything is cleaned up. You can join it with other information and have whatever sent to you be all of this agreed upon data and just overall cleaner compared to maybe something directly from a source. And I'm sure there's many other scenarios where this is going to be really helpful. But what we'll do now is hop over to the screen share and I'll show you how to actually set this up in census. And you can start to think about ways that you can implement this on your own. So here I am on the census homepage when you open up the app and we're going to go over to notifications over here. So this is new. Typically we would work off of syncs, but notifications is this new feature. And real quick, before we get started, just the difference, at least in my opinion, between a sync and a notification is that with a sync, you're essentially copying data from your source of truth. So your data warehouse into another system. It's typically more data being moved along or maybe a whole table. Whereas notifications are more event driven and they're more about messages. So as it says here, it's sending automated messages on top of your data warehouse. So think of it more like that. So as we see here, there are different options for where we can send these messages. We have Teams, Webhooks and Slack. And before we can even get started, the first thing we need to do is set up a connection to one of these. And in my case, I'll set up a connection to Slack. So I'm going to go over here to connections and add something here. So let's go to add service. And as we said, I'm going to do Slack. And this is pretty straightforward. It's going to say by clicking connect, you're going to get uh, redirected and I will allow this to connect. And it's going to go through and test it just to make sure. And that's it, finish. And just like that, census is now integrated with my Slack namespace. So let's go back to notifications and kick this into gear. We'll go to create notification. Now I'm going to go through and set up this source connection, and this is going to be my data warehouse, which is based in Snowflake, but you would pick whatever you have already set up. I'm not going to cover how to set this up. That's in a separate video. The main thing to take a look at here is we need to select an identifier, and this is going to let census know what's the value to look at to know when there's something new. And again, if you have a question on how to set up that initial source, check out one of my other videos and I walk through how to get started with that. All right. So now notification destination, this should work for Slack now because we just set that up and it's going to open up some more options here and it's going to say, what is the destination type? And the two options we have are send a direct message or send to a channel. You can think of pretty obvious scenarios for both of these. You know, maybe you want to send something to a specific person or maybe you have a channel for your whole team where they want to be notified about some sort of event. And in this case, I created a new blank channel just called sales team. So in this example, what we're going to do is say anytime there's a new order, send a notification to the sales team. Now, in reality, depending on how big your company is, that might be way too much. But if you're a small company and, and your sales are less frequent, this might be a good idea. But it's just an example. And think about other examples in your business or in your scenario where soon as that data gets put into your warehouse, you want to be notified. 
So now what's the type of change that's gonna trigger this? In our case, we're gonna select new rows, so only when there's a new row created. As of the time of this recording, this is the only option, but in the future, there will be options for updated rows or conditions, a little bit more complex scenarios to trigger this notification. Moving along, now down to the real meat of this, which is setting up the message. Again, think of this as a message as opposed to syncing data. You're really letting people know what's going on. So let's say, again, we're working with uh, orders information. Now, because of the way that we connected it in the previous screen, it's giving all the options in this table. It knows the metadata of the table, so we can put whatever we want. And this is going to be the message that gets sent. So for the sake of time, I just added in a message for us. You just can type in whatever you want, and you can do markdown just like you would in a normal Slack message. And the nice thing here, again, it's coming from your warehouse. It knows the metadata, so you can add in the individual columns that you want. So, you know, for example, if we wanted to add something else, maybe category just to show you you just click it and it drags it right in there and it knows the type and everything like that so with that set up let's now run a test just to make sure that this gets pushed through we can grab it from our data warehouse and move it over to slack it's just a test message like i said we're just working with this brand new empty channel called sales team imagine you had a team that needs to be notified uh, and it's empty now so we'll wait to see that test notification come through from census okay so this succeeded and we can see the record that was pushed through if we go back to Slack, and here we can see it got pushed through as a new message. And I can see I forgot a colon here, so I can go in and edit this. This is why we test, and that should do it. All right, cool. So from here now, let's go ahead and save this. And here, it's this is a typical sync-looking page, but we can see down here it has the destination of the Slack, the channel, the message template, and all this stuff. You can do it on a schedule. For example, maybe you want all of these messages to be sent at the same time every day. You want it to look to say, um, you know, run it every week, run it once a day, once an hour, whatever, uh, depending on your needs. You could trigger it through all the other normal ways that you have here through Census. But as it says here, it's waiting for the first sync. And what we want to do is select run now. And even though there are uh, about 25 records in this table, the first time it syncs, it's actually just going to do uh, kind of a snapshot. So meaning it's not going to push all of the records. It's just going to get a current kind of lay of the land of all of your records. And then from that moment forward, it will know what's new and what needs to be triggered. So while this is going, if I hop over to notification history here, we can see this first run is a snapshot, meaning new records after this snapshot will trigger the notification. It's not going to send all 25 of these. So let's let this do its job and finish. And now this is all done. So we're up to date. We can go to see details. It's going to take us back over here. And now what we want to do is add a new record and then run the sync, or I should say run the notification trigger, because right now we just have it manual. So we need to trigger it to send it. But again, think about something once a day that you might want to have sent over to you. So what I'll do now is uncomment this and run this insert statement right here. And we should now have a new record, 26th from the Sixers, which we all know is the best team in the NBA. And so now what we'll do is run it again, and it should recognize that new record and sync it over to us and send it as a notification. And here it says one record updated as we would expect here, and that's good. So one record change, one process. Let's go over to Slack, and there it is, new order alert. It's the new order that we just added. And so that is exactly as we hoped, and you can just imagine all the different scenarios where you can push data to people in Slack, in Teams, wherever it is, and they don't have to go anywhere else to get it. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of how to implement this notifications feature within Census. And if you're still curious about reverse ETL or this tool in particular, I do have a whole playlist dedicated to it. Feel free to check it out. And thanks as always for watching, and I'll see you next time.